Welcome, weary traveler. You have stumbled across a comedy chronicle of cranial concoctions, a frenzied fusion of befuddled fables, an exacting expose on eclectic mythos. Should you brave ahead, you will find yourself enlightened, delighted, and only slightly misinformed on the many fantastical worlds that exist within our favorite media. Will you learn all there is to know? <laughs> that I cannot say. But I can say it will be the lore you know. Right, here we are. Episode one, inaugural podcast of The Lore You Know. Hello, I am CJ. I'm going to tell you a great story today about ancient Egyptian history. Hi, I'm Fran. I am excited to learn about our Lord and Savior, Yami Yugi. Hey, and I'm Ethan. Uh, I'm going to ask about the deep economic systems of a world built around a children's card game. And a world built around children's card games we are going to talk about today. Let me just give you guys a little background for how this is going to work, because assuming you've seen all of the previous podcasts that are in this series, which is none, you will know that we are we are going to take a deep dive. We're going to really get into the nitty gritty, the stuff that your average viewer won't won't pick up on of your favorite media. Um, but we're going to talk about all of the deepest and uh, most interesting lore of your favorite things. And what is people's favorite thing more than the Yu-Gi-Oh card game? Which I just want to uh, clarify something real quick. Because I know, Fran, you said that you didn't, you don't know much about the Yu-Gi-Oh lore. Which is good. I, we have a lot to talk about. So uh, we'll get into it. But... I just want to distinguish in the universe of Yu-Gi-Oh, it's not called the Yu-Gi-Oh trading card game. That would be bananas. <laughs> it's called Duel Monsters, which is very important. So when I say Duel Monsters, I'm talking about the in-universe mm -hmm. name of the Yu-Gi-Oh trading card game. But okay. they don't call it Yu-Gi-Oh because that's that. it's just like, why do we play this game based off of some kid's name somewhere? Yeah, as I say, then why is it called Yu-Gi-Oh? Are you going to get into that it's called, for me? It's called... <laughs> Okay, well, we can talk. So, all right, let's start gonna, there. Let's, let's, let's yeah, talk let's jump into Duel Monsters. Let's just let's the jump card into, game. Sure, let's. I, yeah, let's just jump into it. Yeah. Let's get there. Yeah, no, Fran, I, I want we, you to imagine now that you're imagine. sitting in like a little high school classroom, and mm -hmm. you are a Japanese student who has a strong New York accent, and you're seeing your your friend, little little boy with a massive hairdo playing this uh this card game and now you're going to ask him about it yeah uh, the, okay. uh, the whole series the That's whole the series opens up on this yeah the whole series opens <laughs> up on this nerd this little dweeb who's playing a card game and it's very strange because they do if I recall, make fun of him for playing a card game. They're like, what is this, some kind of game for nerds? But then as the show goes on, it's revealed that the entire world is built like solely around people playing this card game, both for their own entertainment and as like an eSport. And it's like the only thing anyone talks about ever. So the fact that they thought he was a nerd for like liking a card game that is the literal, the only part of the cultural zeitgeist of the entire society that they live in is is very strange in yeah. retrospect no it, it was so it'd be like if he just came and was like whoa what's this big mechanical beast that you're driving around in i don't <laughs> yeah, understand like, look at this guy over here using some sort of paper in order to exchange for goods it's crazy <laughs> dweeb uh why does the child yeah. have a New York accent, or is that just a thing? You're thinking about it too much. There's okay. just one who has a. <laughs> so we're, I think so, it's it's a Boston accent, is okay. what it is. By so the way, yeah, we're we're on the you're dub thinking of, version of the show. We're on a uh, show. It doesn't. Ma well, it doesn't matter. He he he's like got an American accent for some reason. Okay. So this does take place in Japan, like all good 
all good anime and mangas. Great, great. Um, mm-hmm. But Animals. we 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 come in, we come in, we see our main character Yugi, who, as you point out, the card game is named after him. the The reason that the card game is called Yu Gi Oh, or the series is called Yu Gi Oh, is because the Japanese love puns, and Yugi, his name is like it's like japanese for like game or something and like that so his his name is a pun on game and then Yu-Gi-Oh means king of games so like the name, implication yeah. is that yugi is is good at games is and then Yugi the character that we start like that that zooms in on yeah he's the main he's the That's main exactly he is right. the main character he's got the big purple hair and the golden the he's golden the one with the big spikes stuff. going on around his head correct yeah okay. he is yugi that is yugi that is, this is okay. that I'm is visualizing yugi. the correct yugi, person yugi right. oh is like when they hung the christ up on the cross and they put the little <laughs> sign up there that said like king of the jews yugi oh is his little okay christ sign uh-huh. above him okay that gives him his title i just want to make sure i'm thinking mm-hmm. of the right child and the and you already mm-hmm. talked about Yami Yugi. He's not Yu Gi Oh. No one is oh, Yu Gi Oh. Okay. That's just the name. He's just. We'll talk about him later. But he's that's different. So Listen, Yami it's, Yugi it's gonna, is not the child. N- no, okay. that's no. Oh, but Yu Gi is the child. Yu Gi is our main character. Okay. So we're talking. So we have we have little young Yu Gi. He's our first. And then okay. Ethan was making a, re- a reference to Joey. Joey, Joey Wheela. Wheela. And Joey in the Japanese is named Jotaro, which is a, also a very good name. <laughs> but the reason that he's named Yugi and he's named Jotaro, and there's this whole like background lore to this, and I just want to touch on it. Apparently, you from Yugi and Joe from Jotaro, oh, when you no. put them together, makes the japanese for friendship because they're Aww. supposed to represent friendship <laughs> that's so, cute oh so that's you, great I know that. so so yujo means friendship and then Aww. they made a card here i'll show you guys they made a card specifically for for the yujo oh look at that little bromance happening a fucking like predator which represents handshake. also also okay that's like, what they look like that's helpful okay yeah that's that those are our main characters everyone's hair is completely massive it okay complete like like joey's joey's head is simply a small growth on the bottom <laughs> of like his a, hair there's like a hedgehog on top of his head or something. Yeah, you know, so this like is a beautiful friend. So yeah, hey. this is this is Joey and Yugi. Honestly, Cosplay the show really terrible. isn't about Joey that much, but okay. for some reason the here. creator wanted the the whole Yujo thing. He wanted a, friendship as a plot point. He did. Everybody needs friendship. I mean, friendship. his Everybody game his, Joey. he said he said he wanted to make a game about friendship and uh bravery and stuff, but he also wanted to make a manga that was very distinctly a horror manga about awful horrible things um he was he was very specific on that he said he really wanted to make a horror manga that was dark and gritty and so he made a card so game? well so he <laughs> was he he thought that the idea of uh of anime protagonists who fight but who uh who, who don't actually like they they fight each other but they don't actually like interact with each other which i'm guessing he just like saw jojo and yeah. he was like i want that but oh yeah yeah no with, jotaro with like it's a, i'm it's assuming a that's JoJo like jotaro's name jotaro. it's a, a jojo i'm thinking reference. it's a jojo, jojo reference. reference we need we he need said, like he, a, a fucking soundtrack thing to where we can just hit a button and it's like it's a motherfucking jojo reference uh, according according to the wikipedia he wanted to use battle as his primary theme, but he didn't want it to be a fighting manga. So he <laughs> came up with this idea of people. And this is also very important, Fran. In the original manga, he is not... Uh, it's not only a card game. Like, everyone really focuses on the card game. But Yugi is the king of games, which is very important during the series. He's the king of all games. And the series, the series is about playing many different types of games and that is that's sort of the crux is that if there's a game that (laughs) exists 
Well, in in the series, in the anime, yeah, it's mostly about the card game. But there are... Well, let's talk about some of that. But yes, so he made a manga about a kid who was really good at games. Uh-huh. And the, the games basically had to have two stipulations because uh, they do do some wacky things. But one is it has to be some sort of tabletop game. <laughs> And two, okay. they have to be able to turn it into a shadow game, which is an evil, horrible, if you lose, you basically go to hell kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And the reason I say it's like any game is because I think there were, they did it with chess, I'm pretty sure in the series. <laughs> like they turned chess into a shadow game mm-hmm. at some point, And they're like, if you lose, you have to spend eternity in the chess hell realm or whatever. <laughs> so he made... He wanted to make a series about shadow games. That's what it's all based on is the shadow games. Is the idea of shadow games his idea? Like, this isn't like an existing thought, right? Shadow games is the mangaka's, like, idea? Yeah, or... I mean, yeah. Okay. It, is, it is his idea, but the idea is basically like, what if when you died in the game, you died yeah. for you real? Died, that's basically what this real. is. Okay. okay. That's, that's right. the so, concept. But, yeah. but so well, I just think it's fascinating that it's like the game has to be able to be turned into a shadow game. So it's like, so basically it has to be, ga- be a game you can win or there, lose. So like this tic-tac-toe, yeah, per- tic-tac-toe the right, shadow yeah, game. You can, yeah. like- no, tic-tac- no, you could absolutely play tic-tac-toe as a shadow game. Like that, oh that absolutely satisfies that. You couldn't play like a two player co-op game. I don't think that could be a shadow game because no one gets okay. sent to the shadow realm. Okay. But, but you're, absol- you're absolutely correct. That that is sort of the thing is that they just like okay if there's no stakes then Yami Yugi just doesn't show up that's how that's kind of how it works he only wants to be He's there hardcore. if there's a, if a he only gamer. wants to be there if if, it's, if there's a chance that he could lose because he absolutely does not want to lose ever yeah okay and but this isn't the that's child. what that's what distinguish that's what distinguishes Yami Yugi from Yugi because Yugi's just like a little kid who cares about friendship and Yami Yugi only cares about the shadow games. Yeah, no, for like, a while, but then they teach him the value of Yujo, <laughs> which is friendship, and, and the value of Joey Wheeler, which is yeah. A good Joey Boston Wheeler goes, accent. "Oh, Yug, I do like that you uh, wish to win all the time, but maybe don't sacrifice your friends' actual mortal souls to accomplish this goal." Hmm. An interesting Fair. concept, Joey. I'll think about it. Um, is, is losing this... to keep friends. Okay, hmm. but, so no, is no. this why? So I've only I've never once again never watched the show. Uh huh. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Shit. Yeah. So so hold so, on, hold on. Is this why his voice gets really deep? I thought it was just a child with a super deep voice. Is it because he's transformed? No, he's, we'll we'll talk about that quick. <laughs> yeah. I just want to wrap up and okay. saying that the anime is the the shadow games are here because it's supposed to be a horror manga. That's the whole reason that they decided to do shadow games. There's monsters fighting each other because it was originally a really, I mean, like the original manga is, it's like a dark gritty horror manga about all these different types of shadow games. Okay. And that apparently the main theme is that uh, humans have a hidden potential. So Yami Yugi is, he's supposed to represent your hidden human potential. But in the actual series, he is an ancient ghost that is inhabiting the body of this small child. So he's not yeah. he's not Yugi's hidden potential. He is a poltergeist. <laughs> but that's the those are the themes of the of the anime. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what okay. the, it's about. Friendship. It's about your hidden potential, and it's about fighting each other without actually touching at yeah, all. Yeah. No, I I want you okay. to like I want you to understand the number of filters. That we are going through because we're going to be talking That's about the Yu Gi Oh show. And I just want you to understand yes. the number okay. of filters yeah. that we go through to get there because it right. starts we have out. To, we have to, yeah, yeah. It's, it starts out as this manga that's like just about like gambling with your eternal soul, right? And then the scariest at, thing, at, yes. At the point in time that this this was like around, the Pokemon card game becomes really really popular. So they decide that they want to, uh, you know, make a brand that competes with that. So they make this anime series and this card game that is based on this dark manga. The anime series comes to America and they want to sell it here too, but it's still too gritty compared to Pokemon. So four kids is the one who uh, dubs the anime. Yeah. And so they, you were, they, no. they were like, make it about oh, cards. No. We need, we can sell cards. Yeah. I forgot to mention four kids oh. is heavily involved in the decision to turn this from a gritty horror manga 
about monsters goring each other yeah. into a a an anime about a children's card game. But because okay. everything is because this whole universe is based around shadow games, it becomes the fact that the whole world is based on a children's card game now because that's the only like that's the only part that's left to to be based okay. off of. Okay. <laughs> okay. Got so, it. So so we have we have the background, <laughs> we have this world. We're going to we're going to come in again. Oh we have nerdy we have nerdy little Yugi who loves games, he loves puzzles. He's an inquisitive little boy. Okay. And all of his classmates are making fun of him. But his grandfather Solomon, his name is Solomon. <laughs> By the way, okay. Yugi's grandpa Solomon Moto. Oh my god, that's <laughs> uh-huh. so good. Basically, everyone who isn't a main character who isn't like the most main character whose name is a pun has a weirdly Egyptian name for reasons they get into later. But Solomon Moto brings his little dweeby grandson. Yugi's parents are dead or something. He lives with his grandpa. Whatever. Uh, I don't know. They don't really go into it much. It doesn't matter. But he lives with his grandpa, and he was an archaeologist. And he, I guess, stole from a tomb, because that's really the only way you could get this. (laughs) But he stole from a tomb an ancient puzzle called the Millennium Puzzle, which is the crux. It is the crux of... Yes. That is... But when, when he gets it, it's just a pile of, like, golden pieces that are all scrambled up. Okay. So the Millennium Puzzle is, like... A, an ancient relic that is apparently just a puzzle and Yugi loves puzzles and his grandpa's like yes my boy here you're kind of a dweeb and a loner you can have this ancient puzzle that I stole from a pharaoh's tomb as a as a toy have fun um and so Yugi solves this puzzle and there's like this there's like a legend that if you solve the puzzle then you like you're granted a wish or yeah. something they don't go into this too much because it's kind of stupid but yugi <laughs> wishes that he had friends um which is really sad but yeah. that is he he solves the millennium puzzle and then he wishes he had friends but as he solves it and wears it he is inhabited by the ancient pharaoh that that used to he doesn't know that yet by the way he's okay. just inhabited by a spirit who apparently really likes games that's all he really knows about him is that every once in a while he just his body gets taken over and he's totally conscious they have like conversations in his mind between the two of them as he's like controlling he's as he's puppeting his human corpse body at this point (laughs) but he is he he's a helpful spirit he's a good he's a friendly spirit but he loves playing games and yugi loves to have him help him win at games yes he's he's a friendly spirit but also like i'm gonna maybe like gamble your life in a few games yeah as i say like he's a friendly spirit that only wants to play to the death got it (laughs) right he's he's got some fun using the child's body all right but the whole be the whole beginning of this anime is at first like they don't start this way because that would be a bizarre way to start the anime but uh like it's yugi and his friends playing this card game. He has flashbacks to an earlier time before he solved the Millennium Puzzle, where every all of his like now friends are just like straight up bullying him, like <laughs> throwing his deck off of a roof, really just like pushing him around and shit. Like they're being real hardcore assholes to him. Um, but then after he solves the Millennium Puzzle, he uh, like gets confident, I guess, because he's inhabited by this ancient spirit that he knows nothing about. And then eventually he's like, guys, actually, this is a really fun card game. And they're like, yeah, you're right. We just realized that everyone in the entire world is playing it constantly and you're really good at it. So we want to be your friends. And so then they start being his friends. Which is just Um, like... the oh, supreme like like child fantasy right there. And yeah, yeah, and I want <laughs> no, it's absolutely all fantasy fulfillment. And I just want to point out again that the implication here is that everyone in the world is constantly playing this game, but the first scene of the game is Joey Wheeler who is kind of the like idiot of the series that everyone's like, "Oh, Joey," but he like matures as he goes, so you like, you know, you feel for him a little bit. Lovable. But yeah, he's yeah. Yeah, but he is like trying to play the game, this card game that his entire world is based off of, and he doesn't know the basic rules to it, which again is like if you saw a stop sign and you're like, hey, oh, what the fuck is this over here? 
he's so that's that's why that's why he starts to like yugi is yugi's like i'll teach you how to play the game better because your deck is actually real shit (laughs) so so that's that's yugi and i mentioned his other friends it's yugi and joey and that's yujo friendship but there's also tristan who is also a dumb idiot and that's kind of his character and he's sort of a blank slate and and there's Taya, who's the girl. Um, and as the series goes on, Taya starts to fall in love with Yugi, but only the part of Yugi that is an ancient spirit that's good at games. She doesn't really like the regular Yugi all that much. But the and regular the, Yugi does likes she her. know he, 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 that he's, he's kind of asexual. <laughs> they go on a date. They go on a date to an, a museum that had an ancient Egyptian exhibit because she's like, maybe this will jog your memory. A museum is sort of the worst, least romantic place, but I'm trying to be helpful. She's all about being helpful. She's like the cheerleader of the group. Okay. She does duel every I once mean, in a she, while, yeah, but she's she really bad the at it. Of the group. Oh, yeah, and, she's uh, the girl. Yeah. Well, there's, 90s, a, there's like. So, yeah. Got she's it. she's the friend girl. She's like the girl next door girl because later on they bring in the girl. She's a woman. Um, How old are these children? They're in high school, obviously, okay. or they're in middle school. They don't really get into it that much. They might be middle schoolers. It's hard. So to they're thirteen. <laughs> they they are like anime kids again. Tristan is like a full grown man with a baby face, uh, and Joey at one point Joey? tries to like bang an actual adult woman so yeah I, they're old enough they're we'll they're just old say enough, high school. Surely, we'll just say let's just say high school they okay. probably, again the, <laughs> oh this I, is your quick deep dis- lore show yeah probably. quick quick, dis- <laughs> quick disclaimer uh surface level lore n- surface level lore. i wouldn't take yeah We're i wouldn't take a lot this of this to me. <laughs> as as the gospel truth so you know if you come for uh actual accuracy sorry that we're you know 15 minutes in or whatever here to dip my toe into this imagine if amazon only sold things relating to one aspect of life and not every aspect and now we're talking about kaiba corp kaiba corp is this big huge company that apparently only makes things related to this children's card game Mm -hmm. dual monsters that everyone is playing but they are by far and away like the most successful company in the entire world. They're like on the cutting edge. They're like inventing virtual reality space that like literally puts you into the game. They invent holograms for the sole reason of making this children's card game dueling more realistic. Oh. Everything they do is to enhance the experience of dual monsters and they are the most successful company in the entire world. So it is a literal card game. Like Yes, yeah, quite like literally. A literal yes. card game. They and they the walk reason around why it looks fancy is because is of this because, corporation. Is because Kaiba Corp made holograms a reality so that they could play their card game better. Yes. Yeah. Now you're starting to understand. Now we're but, starting to okay. get somewhere. But because it's a literal card game where you can die is that from the card game? That's or is only. That from Kaiba that's Corp? only. Or is that that's only, only the manga? The sh- <laughs> that's only in the shadow. That's only if no, it's no, a it's shadow game. No, it's in the game. show. Um, oh, the, it's in, in the, the show. But I that's thought in the, the whole show. game was a shadow. But game. we'll hold on, well we'll get there because we're introducing our 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 antagonist, <laughs> our main antagonist. Okay. Who is, who is also a teenager, but he's mm-hmm. the head of Kaiba Corp, Seto Kaiba. Great. I've heard Everyone this name. Everyone just calls him. Ka- yeah, everyone just calls him Kaiba, except for his little brother who calls him Seto. But Kaiba is in charge of the most successful company in the world, and all he cares about is dual monsters. And he basically leads his company with that in mind and is only ever rewarded for it time and again. So he is <laughs> he is the most richest, successful people. Like if he shows up anywhere, it's basically in his private helicopter, and he goes, "What's up, you fucking nerds? I'm here to play card games." And then everyone's like, "Yeah, cool." So Kaiba is the main antagonist. He and Yugi are constantly competing for who is the best duelist, like throughout the series. Kaiba is at first he's only motivated for like dual monsters, and then he's only motivated to beat Yugi at dual monsters. Right, right, and yeah. Pretty whack. much he. 
when you say that he's there, they're like dueling each other to see who's the best. It's really one of those things where like Yugi's going about his business, and then Kaiba just shows up every once in a while. Yugi, fucking duel me! He's <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, Kaiba, I'm kind of having lunch right now, and no, Yugi, <laughs> I, I have to go to school. <laughs> no, Yugi, it's time to duel, like in the okay. intro of the show. So, so, so not we have in the Kaiba. shadow realm, though. <laughs> No, he he can't do that yet. So we'll, we'll you know, in due okay. time, Fran. Okay. Don't worry. We're, we're getting to the shadow games. We're so close. It's oh it's on the God. tip of our tongue. It's tantalizing. So Kaiba Kaiba busts in to to Yugi's grandpa's card shop while while all of the kids are playing cards, and he's after Yugi's grandpa's one of his prized cards, the Blue Eyes White Dragon. Ah. Uh, because Yugi's grandpa has a copy of the Blue Eyes White Dragon, which he got from his archaeologist friend when they were trapped in a tomb once, and they decided to spend their last moments in this mortal realm playing duel monsters with each other. And Yugi's grandpa won the match, and so they were playing like it's it's very common in Yugi in, in duel monsters to like give up your best card if you lose. Okay. So. Yugi beat his friend at Duel Monsters and they thought they were going to die and his friend gave him the Blue Eyes White Dragon as as a prize. And I mention this only because it has no place in Yugi's grandpa's deck. Like it doesn't <laughs> mm-hmm. belong there. Okay. Decks are built around a certain theme and the Blue yeah. Eyes White Dragon has nothing to do with any of the rest of the cards. Yugi's grandpa just hangs on to it because it reminds him of his dear friend who he likes. Who's dead now? They didn't die in the tomb, but they thought they were going to. A so this time. is like a super rare card. Yes, it's okay. it's very rare, as okay. as we as we soon learn. But the it's highly prized, and Kaiba comes in and says, "I want to buy your card," and then and and he goes, uh, "No, I there's no amount of money. Mm-hmm. Also, I work in a card shop, so like having cards is kind of my deal." Also, I work in a card shop, so like I don't need money. I'm constantly getting money from people buying cards. <laughs> this world runs um, on my card shop. So, in the like in the Kaiba's basically straight evil. He does that sort of anime thing where he's like the most evil guy for a while until like progressively more evil people show up, and then he's kind of chummy with everybody else, you know, as as these things go. Um, so he does like one of the most evil things he does, which is to have the card stolen in the dead of the night of and uh, and takes it. And so he but he still is just really hard for wanting to play duel monsters. So he <laughs> he's like, if you want your card back, you can duel me for it, idiot. And Yugi's grandpa's like, I'm too old to duel, I guess. So you get a certain age, you can't play card games anymore. So he, so he's like, Yugi, uh, my card is stolen and I'm sad. He's like, don't worry, grandpa, I'll go, I'll go get your card back. So he goes to Kaiba Corp. It turns out Kaiba Corp is the one who invented these hologram things. And he's like, Yugi, I want you to duel me on this cool stage that makes all of our monsters real. This is all like episode one, by the way. We're not like any amount into this. Like he shows up, he shows up, steal the card, tells him to come duel, and he's like, Okay, I'll come duel. This is like with the first eleven minutes before the commercial break, I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. Pretty 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 much. And then he's like, Yugi, you want this card? And he's like, Yeah, that's why I'm here. And then he destroys it. He rips it in half. And he's like, why would you do that? That was a rare card. And he's like, I know it's a rare card, dum-dum. I have three of them already. And only four exist in the entire world. And so by destroying this one, I now have only all three that exist. And it's like, dude, you had all four that existed previously moments ago also, but you have to realize never intended to use the car to use it in game he only ever liked to just have it because his friend gave it to him also you do see the card later in the series and he like just taped it back together which is kind of like sweet but it's like the implication is if you just if like a card is too like if it's not nice enough then it's not like regulation so i guess you can't play okay. with it at that point either way I don't know. People destroy each other's cards all the time. It's really mean. It's like that super kind of mean thing mood. to do. Yeah, that's not very nice. But but he destroys Yugi's grandpa's blue eyes white dragon because he has three, and he didn't want the fourth one to exist. 
Um, okay. It, uh, an important note that in the in the Yu-Gi-Oh card game, you can only have three of one type of card in your deck. You can't have more than three. And some cards okay. you can only have one of, but you can't have more than three. So I guess Kaibo is just really playing to the rules, and he's <laughs> like, well, if I can only ever use three at once, then I'll destroy the fourth one. Fair. Which, again, <laughs> the people who made this game knew the rules, and they're like, well, you can only ever have three of this card in your deck, but we're going to make four. <laughs> okay. Only four, though. Not, like, four sets of three, just mm -hmm. four. four. Yeah, no, and this is not even to mention the fact that they made a bunch of cards that like exclusively interact with the blue eyes, white dragon card of yes. which there are only four in the world. So wow. you can yeah. collect Great. a bunch of cards. That's like, huh? This says that it like combines special combines, summon yeah, the blue, special eyes, summons, white blue dragon? eyes, white dragon. Well, what the what hell is even that? is that? Oh, it says there's four of these that exist and a rich guy owns all of them. Okay. <laughs> hey, huh. Cool. Well, this is trash. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we have to imagine that those cards aren't at all rare. People just keep getting them in their booster decks and they're just like, shit, another thing that only works on Dark Magician, a card that only one exists of. <laughs> it's like it's like the McDonald's Monopoly game. You get like all of the pieces around it except for the blue spot. And you're like, oh, I have everything I need except that. I'm almost yeah. a millionaire. It it is it is a sort of unfortunate side effect because like all of the real world cards are based off of like your favorite anime characters cards, but that kind of implies that in universe because their cards are like entirely unique. That just like everyone else has a bunch of like shit generic <laughs> monster cards that just don't matter at all, and they just can't really play the game very well. Um, but so we we've, we've set up the the rivalry between between Kaiba and and Yugi, and they're mm -hmm. they're having their first duel. And it's this really high stakes duel for like his grandpa's honor at this point because the card is destroyed. Maybe it destroys it at the end. I don't actually remember. Listen, I'm not going to research every aspect of the thing I'm going to talk about every single other I don't week need every that we detail. do this. I don't need every exactly. detail. Exactly. So, so they're playing this really high stakes game that's really realistic because it's all like all of these holograms are there and it's all based on like honor and competition and stuff like that. And as they're playing this game, his his magical millennium puzzle starts to light up and Yugi is is he goes Yugi -Oh! and then there's a little theme song it's like da 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 and then the and then there's this whole like Sailor Moon transformation cutscene where Yugi goes from being mild mannered high school Yugi to being very intense very slightly taller <laughs> very like deep voiced Yami Yugi okay and People don't notice this transformation. I want to be very clear that <laughs> they think he looks whenever exactly whenever people whenever people are talking to Yugi, regardless of if he's Yugi or Yami Yugi, they think he's the same person. And it takes them about five or six arcs of the story to realize that that is a thing that happens whenever Yugi is dueling. Okay. They do not know that he goes, hmm, Kaiba. It's you and he's, hmm, Yugi, hmm, Kaiba. And they're both just deep voice talking to each other. And everyone just thinks it's regular Yugi. They're just like, okay, oh uh, whatever. Yeah. I guess Yugi just gets a lot more <laughs> he just, sexual he, energy he, as soon yeah. as he gets Taya, into a game here. Taya is the only one who kind of recognizes this. And she is... Uh, she is like Yugi gets a little different whenever he plays children's card games, but whatever. Yugi is looking at his hand, which has four cards, of which if you get five of, you win the game automatically, regardless of whatever else is happening. He's looking at his deck of these four cards, and he's going, "There's no way I can win." Maybe <laughs> this is this is baby Yugi in his in his head, being like, "We can't be Kaiba." Where you? And he goes. No, Yugi, if you believe in the heart of the cards, uh, we can yeah. find a way to defeat Kaiba. Okay. And again, four of the five <laughs> cards he needs to just win the game are in his hand. He doesn't explain that. Yeah, he just yeah. says, if you believe, we can do it. To be, to be fair, CJ, since none of the cards in the show have any rules on them or any explanation, like, yeah. little Yugi is just looking at these like, I don't know. Uh, we have an arm? <laughs> Are we supposed to do something with that? So, how do people play it then if they don't Okay, yeah, I I'm it? glad I am glad you brought this up. I did want to talk like, about this. All of the what? cards in all the cards in the series are just 
Like they look like the cards you can buy, but yeah. they're just the picture. They don't have any text. Okay. So imagine if you played like Magic the Gathering. And you have only and a you picture. Like, and you had the picture and the name of the card. Okay. And imagine that if you wanted to play Magic the Gathering, when any whenever anyone played a card, you would have to recognize the picture on the card and know exactly <laughs> the numbers and effects associated with that card for every single card in the whole game but how everyone who played it is implied it is implied is it that school? everyone who plays the game all of i mean maybe they never go to class i only ever see them playing card is there games a guidebook in like what i have to imagine there's just like a big Part rule book that's just like twenty thousand pages long that contains every single card and you have to just memorize all the effects that's why yami yugi has such strong power in this world is because he does apparently know all of the rules to the game how? Because he's the Just, king of games. How, in, has this, how indeed? Has this, how has indeed, this game Fran? existed since ancient Egypt? Oh, is that the whole oh, idea? Oh, Fran, come on. <laughs> Which is kind of bullshit, too, Fran, because if he has a card getting, shop and there's new releases, then how is he supposed Fran, to know what those cards Fran, are? Fran, you're, on, you're, unraveling this, you're, unravel, you're unraveling the mystery too quickly, Fran. We'll get there in due it's time. It's almost like it's a children's show. Side note. No. <laughs> no, oh, the, oh um, there's reason for all of this, friend. Don't yeah, you worry. The, but the, yes, the Yami Yugi thing, is very good at this game and he knows all the rules. He's very good at this game. He knows all the rules. And yeah, all these cards, like, there's they don't have parts. the rules on them, which is just like set up for the show to continually go, like, as soon as someone plays a card, like, oh, what does that card do? Like, yeah, a lot there. of people just, yeah, a lot of people just don't know what a lot of the cards do, and so Yugi's just explaining it, and the card always does something that, like, helps him win the game, so it does look mm -hmm. like he's just making up rules in order to win games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That would be yeah, a fun that... way to play a training card game. You get the title, you get well, the picture, and you make up what it does. That, well, that's, that's kind of the implication, because in the real world, the Yu-Gi-Oh card game does have rules written yeah. on the card, and Yu-Gi just doesn't do those. Like, he doesn't follow those rules at all. <laughs> he just does so, like, all right. So, the, it, it is kind of implied that he, that the implication is that there are rules to this game that exist inherently, and that the cards don't actually, like denote these rules it's just that you have to know the rules and yami yugi seems to know all of the rules to the game even though they're not written down anywhere and no one knows them so the game exists outside of the consciousness of people like this game would exist if there was no card game involved but okay. yami yugi does know all of the rules to the card game even though no one else does. So he's doing moves and stuff that like other people don't know how to do basically because he has like insider knowledge apparently. And they're like, Yugi, how do you know all this stuff? And he's like, my grandpa owns a card shop. And then that's <laughs> sort of, that's how he like writes yes. it off. But bad. there are several, there are several instances where people are like surprised at the rules, but they still go through, which is only even more bizarre because these giant hologram things like read the card. They put the card yeah. on this like on, on the platform and it like renders it in a hologram, right? Yeah. So presumably they had to program Right. They had to program Someone it to like something. do cuz like cuz like the monsters are animated and everything. Like right. presumably there isn't like an AI inside of the machine that like reads the monster card and is like, "All right, this is probably what this card is doing." And then like renders out all the attacks and stuff and like death like they all have death animations and stuff yeah. like that. Like someone had to program that presumably. And yet every time Yugi does a rule that no one in this generation knew about, the computer just does it. So again, the implication is that this card game exists and that this the the, the hologram is sort of just pulling from that and like rendering it into reality. Like this card game is influencing reality like via technology, <laughs> via like like any possible way it can worm its way into yeah. human consciousness, it does so independent of how humans sort of like relate to it. Mm -hmm. So the implication there is that this card game exists as as something something bigger, something greater besides just a children's card game, though it is just a children's it card a game children's in card this game. universe. A children's okay. card game that all adults and everyone else also plays. 
Yeah, yes, exactly. Yes, but no one actually so, knows the rules. But too. no one knows how to play. You know so, how everyone's favorite <laughs> games are the ones where, like, suddenly someone says, "Oh, I do this." Yeah, you know, I didn't know that you could do that. Yeah, I win because I did this. No, you definitely <laughs> can, though. You can. It's in the well, rules. No. You can. It's like with the whole Monopoly the no. thing <laughs> where every house has their house rules, but like and it, mm-hmm. the game takes 5,000 hours but to the do. Game, but the but game like the has its game own rules. house rules. Yeah. Well, like, yeah. yeah, the game has like, right. you actually follow the game's actual rules. It shouldn't take nearly right. as long to play. So, yeah, so, so, so Yami Yugi's special power is basically that he knows the rules to this game. Like or that's a lot of up. it. Okay. But. So again, he's holding four pieces of Exodia back to this duel. And he's like, I believe in the heart of my cards. My grandfather's deck will prevail over Kaiba's shitty blue eyes dragon deck. And so he pulls the fifth card and summons Exodia. And Kaiba's like, ah, Exodia, no one's ever summoned him before. Yeah, and huh. and Yugi does. So he defeats Kaiba Im- immediately because that's just an insta win condition if you just have all five pieces of Exodia. Yeah, and win. so he... And so he summons Exodia on the holographic s- screen and Exodia like blows up Kaiba and like they're holograms, but they seem to have physics in the real world. Like there's like wind whooshing around and everything whenever like things explode. Um, and so Yami for a reason. And so, and, and the resolution to this is Yami Yugi says, Kaiba, you're a dick. And I don't like that you destroyed my grandpa's cards. And I defeated you in a game, so I declare this a shadow game. And now that I've defeated you, I can take my unholy vengeance upon you. And so I use Mind Crush. And Yami Yugi uses his mystical powers, which is the first time it's revealed that he has like actual magic powers. And he uses this to Mind Crush Kaiba, which destroys his ego. Like his, his like metaphorical ego like cool. the concept of his ego is <laughs> destroyed like and that. put yeah. <laughs> and put back to he sends his ego to the shadow realm and so kaiba is left a broken man who has to reassemble his personality and his reassembled personality seems to be solely around rematching yugi and defeating him in a card game <laughs> but he is a slightly less dick about it so Okay. Apparently, this 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 Still pretty belev- benevo- <laughs> this benevolent slash malevolent spirit that exists inside Yugi has magical powers to destroy people's minds. He learns that, and, and he's no like, "No one bats uh, an eye at that." Hey, hey, uh, he he says he calls him the spirit of the Millennium Puzzle. That's what Yugi calls him because he doesn't know who he is yet, and the spirit doesn't know who he is yet. Okay, so he says, "Hey, uh." That was pretty hardcore what you did to Kaiba. And he was like, (laughs) yes, but he deserved it. So it's fine. And he's like, okay. So Yugi's starting to get a little scared of his of his ancient nameless spirit at this point. Um, But that kind of sets up the whole show. All right. And after after this premise is set up, we're introduced to a new character, an amazingly eccentric, great character named Pegasus. And Pegasus is in charge of the company that makes dual dual monsters, like actually makes the cards. Kaiba's company doesn't make cards. They only make everything else to make the game experience better. Okay. Yeah, but Kaiba, Kaiba's Pegasus company is They make is things the for the second... cards to interact with. Yeah, right, exactly. right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, Kaiba's right. company is like the second wealthiest company in the world because it makes yep. everything about the game except the cards. And then Pegasus's company is the wealthiest company in the world yeah. because it make makes the cards. The cards. Pegasus it. is implied to basically be like a king of this world because his company has the final say in what the card game is. He <laughs> makes all the cards. He releases the cards. He decides what cards exist and don't. And in a world that's only about card games, that makes you a god. So he's this eccentric. Okay. He's like Willy Wonka. Like everyone knows about him, but like <laughs> no is, one yeah. sees him. Okay. And he lives on, and he lives on his own private island that he basically made into a, like a kingdom. He is essentially a king. And the name of the arc is Duelist Kingdom. 
So, so does he it turn out that he's also an Egyptian god that was taken. No, from no, no, tomb, no, no, or... no, 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 no. You start, you're starting to go, you're starting to go in the wrong way now, friend. But we'll get there. So I'm he, sorry, he says because he's Pegasus he, or something. Again, I cannot. Now that I mention it, I cannot point out how similar he is to Willy Wonka because he, no one has seen him, and so he puts out. He's like, I'm having a tournament, and oh everyone who is invited comes out to my island my magical island mm -hmm. and we're all going to play duel monsters and the winner of the tournament gets to duel me and if they beat me in a duel i will give them riches beyond their wildest dreams and a wish i guess okay <laughs> and and he just has the means to make that come true because he's you know in charge of everything and so the invites all go out for this this card game Pegasus is like, I want you to come, Yugi. And Yugi is like, no thanks. I love playing children's card games, and a tournament is really fun, but I don't want to do that, I guess. And so Pegasus well, is like, people can tis, die tis. from it, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, right. You, yeah, Yami Yugi doesn't care because the stakes aren't high enough, and Yugi doesn't care because I guess he's just more into friendship than about winning a literal fortune and wish. Uh, and a wish. His grandpa owns a card so, shop, though, so he has plenty of money. It's fine. Exactly. He lives. He lives a life that he enjoys. It's fine. But Pegasus goes, no, 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 Yugi boy, I really want you at this tournament. And he goes, no, 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 I'm, I am totally fine. He's like, no, I do think you want to be at this tournament. And he's like, no, 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 no. And so he gives him a VHS, and he puts the VHS in his player, We're and he plays the, the VHS, and he plays the VHS, <laughs> and the VHS is an a static interactive media thing which freezes time around him and he's all of a sudden in a new realm and yugi's like what's going on and yami Yugi's like be careful yugi we're in the shadow realm it's like how do you know that and then he's and, and so this this vhs teleported him into the shadow realm where pegasus is waiting for him and he's like, well, Yugi boy, how about we play a shadow game? And this like triggers Yami Yugi. And he's like, did you say shadow game? And, <laughs> and it's a little confusing because why does Pegasus have this ability to trigger shadow game? So far, only Yugi has been able to do that. Or Yami Yugi has been able to do that. Other people can't do shadow games, but they can do stuff like, like I remember at some point there's some fucking like, guards who are like hey you're not supposed to be here and we're supposed to fucking kill you but if yeah. you beat us in this children's card game <laughs> yeah. then i guess you can pass if yeah you they lose, do that a lot shoot you okay. we will, yeah we again uh, if only all all uh like police interactions could be ds it's a pretty it's a pretty a card game right yeah it's a pretty wholesome world people follow the rules yeah, but if nice. it is a shadow <laughs> but if it is a shadow game though it's a lot less wholesome and you get sent to the shadow realm and being in the shadow well, realm is does. basically hell. No, that's just he, Yugi just did that one time. Other people just get sent mind, okay. body, and soul to the shadow realm. Okay. Uh, right. It's, like you do. it's very, it's very scary. <laughs> um, but uh, Yami Yugi and Pegasus play this this shadow game, which they're both they both seem to be on board with what a shadow game is, and they're both cool with it. And uh, Yin Yugi Yami Yugi loses, and uh, he doesn't know how because it's it's like Pegasus had had knowledge that he could not possibly have of the game, um, almost like he was cheating because he technically was, uh, but he seems pretty okay with it. But he says, "Well, well, Yugi, I won a shadow game, and that means I get to do something horrible to you." And he goes, "Yes, that does. Yeah, that's how they work." And he's like, "I'm going to trap your grandpa's soul in a playing card," and so he does that. What? And so Yugi's grandpa goes into a, a, a comatose state, and his his immortal soul is now trapped inside of a children's playing card that. Pegasus now has and he says if you want your grandpa's soul back you you have to come beat me and use your wish to free your grandpa's soul and so that's what he does and that's why he goes to to the the duelist kingdom which is the name of the tournament that's terrible yeah no it's a, it's absolutely frightening the implications that yeah well he did lose a shadow game so those them's the rules <laughs> you know yeah but who's gonna run the card shop back home 
Oh. Uh, nobody does. They just like, yeah, it, it's just like whatever. Know. They maybe must maybe have so much kid. money. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah who cares? Who cares? <laughs> yeah, it does. It does seem that like only Yugi and his grandpa run the shop. But, but so they all go there. They go on this boat. They meet a couple other famous. Like I mentioned that there were like tournaments and stuff happening in the background. Uh, they meet uh, Rex and Weevil. Rex uses a dinosaur deck and Weevil uses an insect deck. Um, they're both huge assholes. They get uh, Weevil uh, hears I... that Yugi has Exodia in his deck, but just like one of each piece, which again is a really shit strategy, but he knows that that's how he beat Kaiba and he knows he's going to be in the tournament. So he's like, I... He's like, oh, Yugi, I hear you have Exodia. Can I see your cards? And he's like, yeah, of course, because this is regular Yugi. So he's very trusting of he's people. He's an idiot. And he's like, oh, this is very interesting. And then he just fucking chucks Exodia off of, the uh, boat, off of off the boat. boat. And like, and it's just <laughs> lost to the sea. And like, <laughs> Joey and Tristan jump into the ocean to try and retrieve these cards. And they only get like two of them. Which is worthless, but Yugi's like, thanks for trying, guys. You really shouldn't do that. That's how you can die, you yeah, know, that, was that a huge way. We're in the ocean. Ship you jumped off of in yeah. the ocean, yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, Weevil in the dickest move does just like throw away his insta win so that he can't use it anymore. So that's why Exodia doesn't really come into play a lot later because yeah, he doesn't have um, Exodia anymore. So, like, you were just saying, like, like how Weevil and Rex are, are dicks, right? Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think, does he, like, for the first several seasons, ever meet another duelist who doesn't at least start out as a huge dick? Like, I feel like everybody is constantly just the, like, eh, I am the, the greatest duelist. Fuck you. No, I mean, everyone's like, the, I'm the greatest duelist, but uh, some of them keep it in, like, the competitive realm and not, like, the super asshole realm. <laughs> like, that's just a really dick move. Like, <laughs> could you imagine if a kid, when you were a kid, took some, like, really cool cards that you got that your grandpa gave to you, and also your grandpa's soul is currently <laughs> stuck in a card, and then he just, like, throws them off of a cruise ship to destroy them so that he can more easily beat you at the card game? You would, I mean, you would hate that guy forever. And Weevil's <laughs> never really, like, redeemed. He's always, he's a very minor villain, but he, he's never redeemed. He's an asshole forever. As opposed to Kaiba, who gets a redemption arc. But, um, so they meet these people. They have that experience. They also meet May. May Valentine. May Faye. Valentine. Faye Valen Faye no, Valentine's, damn not it. May Valentine. No, I don't know now. No, Faye Valentine's no, from May Cowboy Bebop. I think it's May with an I. Yeah, May Valentine. Okay. She is a... A very adult woman who's also a professional duelist. Oh, you told me she that uses one. she uses her, her <laughs> like sex potness to like get inside information about people's decks and stuff. And uh, she just like uses the fact that she's a a banging hottie to like yeah. win card games. No, she, is, she has the yeah, harpy I, deck. If I if I her, remember correctly, kay. she shows up in like like uh tight leather short shorts is like her starting no it's a, it's a i'm skirt. sure that's burned oh, into skirt. your memory yeah okay. it's yeah, an that actual is, skirt yes yeah she's like um, she's like she wears like a like a tied up bodice mm -hmm. that's just like a like a corset like a basically oh well, okay a corset <laughs> corset. yeah, yeah. But, as her but, shirt and then she wears like a vest over the top of it but it's like that's not hiding anything no she's i mean and she is she is totally again Again, this is like early 2000s, 90s. This was made absolutely playing to that sex appeal thing. Like, mm -hmm. I I think the first thing she does in the show is like she goes up to this this duelist who has like a really nice. Uh, he has like the suite on the the cruise mm -hmm. ship, right? Yeah, it was Rex. And she, yeah, yeah. And she's like, uh, "Hey, how about we make a little wager? If I win a card game, I get to stay in your room by myself, and if you win." I'll stay with you in your room. Oh, and like, like oh, that's, that's that, that fucking rules. <laughs> yeah, that sounds loses. super rad. And then, yeah, yeah, then she beats him and takes his room. But like, like so, that's that's the kind of character that she is. Okay. Yeah, she she has the harpy deck. She uses the harpy sisters <laughs> at, in her deck. So I I should mention too because you don't know Yugi's main deck. His whole deck is centered around the dark magician. 
Okay. Sort of. Uh, I mean, which it's, is, it's a fucking nonsense deck. That happens which to is, also have Exodia in it. It happens or to have well, yeah, Exodia. Exodia. Well, it had Exodia. It had Exodia. Yeah, yeah. Exodia. Yeah, yeah. Like, now it's, now it's, yeah, now it is, yeah, now it is, now it is solely a, like, dark magician centered deck. Yeah, it yeah, has okay. a bunch of wacky random nonsense, but, like, everyone has their, like, stand that is their, like, main Mm-hmm. They're, they're like a main like it's person. Built around this, yeah. And Jojo, and Jojo Yugi's Yugi, yeah. Yugi's okay. is the dark magician. Mm-hmm. Kaiba's is blue eyes. Dark and magician is different dark magician. than dark magician girl. Yeah, yes. one of them okay. is a girl. I well, will let you decide okay. which one. Okay. <laughs> obviously, obviously, if you say someone's a magician, you assume that they're a man. <laughs> like if you say someone's a doctor, you assume it's a man, unless you say doctor girl, and then you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the female version. Oh man, uh, well, we're we're still working out our our sort of theme here. It's but, a joke. Uh, it's a joke. It's, it's, it's a it's, it's a joke it. podcast. It's not um, real, obviously. No, but, obviously, uh, I always say Doctor Girl unless they're doc, a boy. Yeah. Then I say Doctor Girl Boy. But uh, but yeah, no, friend. Like uh, so, just sort of like comparing it to the actual Yu Gi Oh card game, like. Yeah, a lot of the characters in the show have like card decks that would actually do okay in the real card game, you know. Except for Yugi. Yugi's deck is a bad deck. It's yeah, like yeah. really bad. He has a bunch of cards that like don't have anything to do with each other, mm-hmm. and like if if at it, at sometimes they will release like this is the Yugi deck you can buy, and they usually like make up cards for that deck that are like these two cards that have nothing to do with each other work because uh, Yugi did them. Um, okay. But doing that at the same time allows them to just like randomly pull out a card that yeah. like is, they're like, this has been in Yugi's deck the whole time. He's just never drawn <laughs> it before. And it's yeah, like, oh, well that it. just happens to be for this exact scenario, yeah. the perfect y- card. Convenient. Yugi, yeah, Yugi's deck is only good if you can pull the exact card you need whenever you need to, which also <laughs> seems to be one of y- Yami Yugi's powers. Because he believes in the heart of the cards. Right. And his Jeez. deck will reward him. So they all go to Duelist Kingdom. Um, they get these little gloves that have, like, stars on them. And you have to collect ten stars. You get stars by wagering them in in a duel game. Okay. Everyone starts with two. Uh-huh. And, like... If you just bet two right away, you're just out of the competition after your first duel. Like, as long as you have a star, you get to keep competing because no one would duel you if you didn't have any stars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, you're basically, you're de facto out if you run out of stars because no one's going to duel you anymore and you need 10 stars. Once you get all 10 stars, you get to go into the castle and there's a castle, by the way. It's a literal kingdom. And it's like mostly wilderness but like well, you, it's you an just, island you said right so it's just yeah it, it's an island it's yeah. like an island with like a bunch of different biomes too like yeah there's the ocean section there's like right. the forest it's, section there's like I'm a sure, desert this on rich, it too. rich man yeah yeah right yeah. terraforms and then there's the, the whole thing right right and it's that sort of thing where it's like you know it looks very natural until people want to duel and then suddenly giant holographic monster projectors yep. shoot out of the ground. Perfect. I'm I'm just gonna fly through Duelist Kingdom. They all duel each other. There's a labyrinth that people always talk about that one. The uh the, the Joey runs out of all his stars at once, but then Yuki just gives him some because he's like, whatever. Which there's no rule against that. You can just do that. So they did that. Um I think I'm pretty sure they knock out May at some point and he's just like, nah, it's okay. You don't have to give me your stars and then she keeps competing and there's a whole thing um also pegasus kidnaps mokuba like just kidnaps him yeah, i think he also brother, puts yeah. his kaiba's little brother and that's why he's competing because otherwise he's like i'm too good for this tournament i only want to fight yugi and he's already rich so i guess he didn't care so then to lure him there he also had to kidnap and soul bind mokuba in a card Pegasus seems um, to like kidnapping people and putting them into cards. Well, he didn't. Yeah, he yeah. didn't kidnap Yugi's grandpa. He just put his soul just, in a card. He but just he kidnapped did, his soul. It's different. But he did. He did actually kidnap. Oh, Mokuba like actually and, steal the child in the night, kind of. And kidnap. put his yeah. soul in a card. And he put did his both. Soul in the card. Okay. So Kaiba's in there too, and he's like, "I have been enhancing the dual technology because that's all he does. Also, yeah. he's a genius. He's like he invents these things as well." Or like 
it he seems to be involved in the process of making them. Yeah. He at least tells other people to make these specific <laughs> things. This is when he has the dual disc version one. And it's and a literal, no, 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 no. It's a no. literal disc okay. that you hold and you have an armband on it. But what you do is you put your cards on the disc and you throw the disc out. Okay. Like a Beyblade. And there's a wire attached between you and the disc. And when the disc goes out and starts spinning, then it starts to show the holograms. So in order to... So what do you mean like a Beyblade? Make, like a Beyblade. Okay. It's like, like, an, like it's spinning. Like, it's like there's spinning. two discs spinning between the two, the two okay. competitors. Oh, my God. And he and they and it projects the holograms and so to put a new card you have to recall your disc using the string put more cards into it and then spin it back out like a beyblade which again because yugi is the king of games he just know like he instinctively picks up on how to do this because this is a game and he's like yeah i can do that the, like he rolls with every punch to every game every time because okay. he's just the king of games so instead of using oh, that's like the also, pedestals to put the cards on, the idea is that these right. are like portable Kaiba, pedestals. Kaiba, Kaiba is able to to play this duel with Yugi in a place that is not right, bound anywhere. by the large stage. Got it. Yeah. Got it. So there isn't okay. a large stage for this one. And the only reason that matters is because Yugi is about ready to beat Kaiba again. And then he's like, this is just too easy, my man. You suck so bad at this game. <laughs> And he does something that turns blue eyes into like a decaying zombie dragon that's like slowly sapping his life. And mm -hmm. Kaiba's distraught at the sight of his favorite card becoming like a oozing puddle of disgusting flesh and bones. Okay. And so he, they're on the castle, remember? So he jumps up on one of the parapets and he says, Yugi, I made these dual disc discs so that they have physics. So that when a monster blows up, it literally makes a force wave that blows up. And he's like, yes, I remember how your weird <laughs> physics engine that makes works. Sense, and he yeah. says, if you destroy my monster, the explosion is going to blow me off of the side of this castle and I'm going to die. What? And so basically, <laughs> if you beat me, I'm kind of going to kill myself, but I'm going to do it in a way or it's that, your fault. You that you caused it. Oh and, the, and it's Yami Yugi at this point. And he's like, yeah, okay, all right, sure, yeah. I'll do that, yeah. whatever. Like, he's he's getting ready to do it, and Yugi chimes in, and he's like, no, you can't kill Kaiba. And he's like, yeah, I can, <laughs> it's a shadow Kaiba. game. It's his own fault. <laughs> um, but basically, Yugi forfeits. He, like, forces himself to forfeit, and this really upsets Yami Yugi. Oh, he's yeah, like, Yami's we pissed. Were, we were dueling. And he's like, no, 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 no. Um, but this is how Yugi loses all star chips. And then that's when his other friends help him out. They just give him more star chips. And it's like, whatever. Friendship. But yeah. Kaiba, Kaiba threatened to kill himself. And Yugi was gonna, Yami Yugi was going to just go along with it. And he's like, yeah, that seems fair. Seems fair. Um, but Yugi had to intervene. So now we're seeing a bit more darkness in, inside of Yami Yugi. Yami just means dark, by the way. So Yami Yugi is just dark Yugi. Mm -hmm. But again, he's, he's an unknown mm -hmm. soul from the Millennium item. Um. There's also a part, the only reason I bring up this other part is they fight Bakura. They meet Bakura, who is one of their <laughs> classmates. They just don't hang out with him that much. Or it's Bakura. It's Bakura or Bakura. The people say it Whatever. differently. I say Bakura. But he also has a Millennium item. He has the Millennium Ring, which is oh. like a ring with the with the eye of The little Isis. eye thing on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in the center. All of the Millennium items have the eye mm -hmm. in them. And it's like a it's like a pendant that he wears. It's like a ring around this triangle, and then there's little like dangly bits that just like dangle off the <laughs> side. Um, and we're like, oh, that's pretty cool. We learn that Bakura is also possessed by an ancient spirit called Yami Bakura. <laughs> I guess. Um, he doesn't have. They don't know any of their own names yet. But the the ring has an ancient spirit inside of it as well. Um, and we actually learned that there's seven millennium items. Of course. Um, so far we know That's so cute. far we know of the ring and the puzzle that are both like necklaces that they wear that have spirits inside of them. Okay. None of the other ones are necklaces, and none of the other ones seem to have ancient spirits inside of them. But until okay. now, we don't actually know that. So um but they they play a legit shadow game. They're both just like, ah, I see you're an ancient spirit who can initiate shadow games as well. Do you want to play a shadow game? And they're like, yeah, that sounds good. And in this one, it's like it is the card game, but they like 
actually put their friends' souls in, so they're their monsters. So uh, this is the first time that Yugi and Yami Yugi like separate because actual Yugi is in the game as the Dark Magician. So it's like little Yugi dressed up as Dark Magician, and he is inside the Shadow Realm battling okay. other monsters that Yami Bakura summons, who are just monsters. He doesn't have to put his friends in there. He doesn't there. have friends. But like, he doesn't have friends, yeah. But like uh, Joey is in there as the Flame Swordsman, who's like his main card at this point. And Tristan is there as a uh, like commando or something like that. That's some, his some other lame shit. Trim's, Tristan Taya's Taya's the spirit of friendship or something. That's like her favorite card. Um, but Yami Yugi to like maximize the amount that his friends can help him summon all of his friends into the game. But if you die in the shadow game, you get sent to the shadow realm. Mm -hmm. And for a while, Tristan is sent to the shadow realm because he's destroyed as a monster. Oh. And he is it like shows you what the shadow realm is. And there is the Reaper of Cards, which is just the Grim Reaper flying around trying to send you to actual hell when you are in the shadow realm or it's just like going to destroy your soul and then you just don't exist anymore it's very frightening yeah that sounds terrifying <laughs> that sounds awful fortunately yugi is able to use the card reborn the monster to bring him back which commando is a really bad card so using a monster reborn on it to bring him back was not a very strategic move but yugi really wanted him Friendship. to save all his friends yeah. Yeah. So he he agreed to that, and so he beats Bakura. He uh sends him to the shadow realm. That's that's when he like just mind, body, and soul sends Bakura to the shadow realm. His classmate. Yeah. He well, sends his it's, classmate to the shadow realm. Well, it's, it's Yami. It's Yami Bakura sending yeah, but, Yami. Ya, but it's still it's the Yami, child. Yugi but he's possessing the Yami child's Bakura. body, so the child is gone forever as well. Yeah, Yugi was actually kind of on board with that one. Quite <laughs> honestly. They made him play like an evil shadow game. And he's like, yeah, he deserved it. Fuck him. Okay. <laughs> um, so that happened. But we learn about the Millennium Ring and that there's another Did ancient he, spirit. That's the Millennium yummy. Ring go into the Shadow Realm as well. Yep, that's gone too. So then there. there's he six. Didn't, he didn't. He didn't that. think. He didn't think to grab it. So mm. whatever happens. I feel like maybe should have. Anyway, so he goes to fight Pegasus. Um, Pegasus has the Millennium Eye. That's how he was able to cheat before. Mm -hmm. His Millennium Eye lets him see into his enemy's mind's eye. He can read their minds, which is also how that he knows like that cheating. Yami. He that's how he knows how Yami Yugi exists, and he also knows whatever's in the opponent's hand at any given point because he can just read their mind. So yeah, he's basically cheating. Yeah, that's um, that's called cheating. So over like. 10 episodes of them dueling each other eventually yugi beats pegasus and mind crushes him or some shit and pegasus is distraught but he is a man of his word so he gives yugi the fortune these are cards he gives them like a cards which are like coupons i guess one of them is just a bunch <laughs> of gold like a gold pile in a card so he mm -hmm. gives them that i guess that's like a coupon for a fortune and then the other one is the cards containing his friends' soul so okay. then he frees all of them again um oh yeah pegasus was also that's how he trapped their souls was using the millennium yeah, I was eye. say like he's able to trap souls because of the eye got it all right yeah it's not very well themed the millennium eye is kind of a catch-all but whatever um also it's the only one that actually replaces his eye like he he's wearing the eye in his oh. eye. oh oh yeah. i still Ooh. yeah Okay. So, yeah, no, I mean it's what it's one of those classic things where for the first, you know, until it's revealed, he's got the the hair. Over right. His his eye. anime hair is covering an eye. So, but then you can see it like glowing every once in a while. So this this arc wraps up, and everyone is safe, and we learn about we've learned about everything. How in the heck does Yami Yugi know so much about all of this? All this here card games. All what are these Millennium items? How many episodes well, are we in at this point? <laughs> I mean, we're, we're, we're gonna, like the first arc in. I don't know how many. Yeah, episodes, this is this is like... just yeah, this is just the first arc. Okay. And I don't want to talk about all the other arcs beat for beat like we did this first one, but we have to talk about how Fran, you you accurately pointed out how how the heck how the heck does he know There's all this new stuff? cards? <laughs> how do they know the new cards? What's happening? Over the, the next like four five six arcs whatever 
we're revealed all of these things in bits and pieces. I don't want to watch that many. (laughs) No, we're not. So I'm going to tell you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you what's going on. First off, the Millennium Puzzle. Yeah. No, we're deep in it now. The Millennium (laughs) Puzzle was originally called the Millennium Pendant. And it wasn't a a puzzle. It was just another. It was just another Millennium item. It was just a necklace. Okay. Mm -hmm. It turns out that this unknown spirit that inhabits Yugi's body and helps him be good at children's card games was an ancient pharaoh from Egypt mm-hmm. that was uh, named Atem, but he forgot his name or it was erased from him. So it takes a long time to figure out that his name was Pharaoh Atem. Okay. But Yami Yugi is actually this pharaoh and he just calls him pharaoh for a while yugi's trying to figure this all out because he sends his mind into the millennium puzzle which is set up as like a labyrinth hiding all of this information and so he has to go in and like figure it out he's helped by another guy who has the millennium key which allows him to enter people's minds uh okay and unlock and unlock the secrets of their mind so he helps the pharaoh by unlocking his his hidden knowledge which is how he figures all this stuff out again so we have the millennium key the millennium pendant and the millennium ring and the millennium eye there's the millennium scales uh which judges a person's soul um they don't use that one that much (laughs) that one just kind of comes in at the end uh they have the millennium rod which uh grants you just magical powers okay it's it's like magical strength basically all right uh it's that one's really hardcore um and there's the millennium uh pendant i think it's like a necklace or no the pendant is what the puzzle used to be it's the i don't know it's a millennium whatever necklace (laughs) it's like a choker necklace though okay uh it lets you see the future the the millennium yeah. the millennium teenage choker yeah it lets you see the future mm-hmm. so whatever um pretty useful in card games turns out <laughs> there's a there's a uh, uh there's like a whole family of egyptian people who are like waiting for this pharaoh to reincarnate mm. um and they explain a lot of this to him um and they're there to help him except one of them betrays him and that's malik and he wants and he becomes yami malik because he's overcome by his dark desire to bring about the end of the world. So here's the thing about the ancient pharaohs. Um, They played ancient shadow games Mm -hmm. with real monsters. Okay. And so this Pegasus was also an archaeologist. Of course. He went to, he went to ancient Egypt and he, he discovered a bunch of stone tablets and on these stone tablets had carvings of monsters on them. And so he decided to make a children's card game that was based one-to-one on these ancient monsters. But these stone tablets contained the souls of actual monsters because the ancient pharaohs would find real monsters and trap their soul inside of tablets so that they could use them in high-stakes games of like shadow games where they would literally duel monsters against each other in order to like fight and win wars and stuff. Okay. The, mad, the, the spells and the trap cards in the game were the actual abilities of the summoners who were magicians. Like they could just use real magic that they would use in these monster duels to fight each other. Okay. S- so Pharaoh Atem, who is Yami Yugi, mm-hmm. was was a pharaoh, and as pharaoh, he had access to all seven of the Millennium items and all of the strongest uh... dual monsters. And so, also everyone is apparently a reincarnated version because Kaiba's there, which is why his name is Seto, because it's like Egyptian. His name is Seto. Because there was an ancient priest named Seto who is good friends with the pharaoh. He's just reincarnated. He's not okay. inhabiting the soul of his of Kaiba. reincarnation. Just... Unlike Yugi, who seems to be inhabiting his own reincarnated body okay. as his ancient soul. Because of the millennium. Because of the necklace. because his soul was put into the millennium pendant. Yes. Okay. For reasons. So <laughs> the ancient the ancient pharaohs played dual monsters. Mm-hmm. That's why this game exists as it does, Fran. It's not because Pegasus 
made the rules of the game. It's because he discovered the game and he discovered the real monsters that are associated with these shadow games that the pharaohs used to play and just made a card game that happened to line up one-to-one -one with the ancient shadow games that the pharaohs would play against each other all of then when kaiba made these holograms it realized the monsters enough that it became like you're actually kind of summoning the spirit of these ancient monsters to fight each other which is why they infect all the environment and stuff around them because these are real monsters that exist in the world and are trapped in ancient stone tablets but are being summoned via a children's card a children's Hologram. playing card that contains a picture of them that references them and is rendered into a hologram and is also why the monsters like fight as monsters in these card games. That's why there's no like abilities on the card because the monsters right. are just because the monsters just have that ability. The monsters just are just monsters. Yeah. Got yeah. it. That's that's just what they are. Okay. So so we're in ancient times and they're dueling monsters and they're all using magic and the Pharaoh has all of the millennium items. So he has super magic. Okay. I there's an ancient questions. evil that is darkness. Evil. Of course there's incarnate. an ancient evil. All right. Of course there is. Of course there's an ancient evil. Right, what, is, what, He's, is, what, his, is, what is your question, Fred? You look my, maybe a little bit lost somehow. No, no. My follow-up question is, is where are these stone tablets? Are they oh, still in, in Egypt? Egypt? They're buried in like tombs and stuff in Egypt. That's how Pegasus found them. Huh? Yes, yeah, but no, like, this, did he take this them? This whole show is is also just no, about he made, uh, grave he made, robbing. Yeah, he made paintings based on them. Okay, and those paintings like, are what's on the cards. And those paintings, yeah, those paintings are the cards. So he is an archaeologist slash artist, and he was like, he's explaining all this to Yugi. He's like, I was an archaeologist. I found the Millennium Eye. It inspired me to make this game based exactly on the ancient tablets that I found, which are dual monsters. So I made this card game called Dual Monsters, but it's really just a recreation of this game that the ancient pharaohs were playing. That were magical. So there's okay. Zork Necrophades. <laughs> Zork Necrophades is like Great. evil incarnate. He's like- Yes. Satan. Ancient evil incarnate, he, got it. Right, he's trying to end the world and he's a monster. Okay. So he counts as a monster, but he's too powerful to be bound into tablets like the other mm -hmm. monsters are. Mm -hmm. Um, so Yugi is, or, you know, it's, 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 uh, a Tem, which is just, you know, mm -hmm. old, old Yugi. Mm -hmm. He is a Pharaoh in these ancient times. He's playing this card game and his friends are helping him out. He has one friend who is a, who is like another priest who like supports him. And in doing so, he merged his own soul with the, with the, uh, like a magician, uh, monster that he summons and so he becomes the dark magician and the reason that Yugi likes the dark magician card so much is because the actual dark magician monster that he summons is his actual friend from when he was Aww. a pharaoh that sacrificed himself to save Aww. him and so whenever he summons his friend the dark magician in a card game he's actually summoning his summoning his real ancient friend as a monster to help fight for him the, similarly for dark magician girl who's like his who was the original dark magician's apprentice Aww. girl that's so that's cute. why yugi likes the dark magician friendship um yeah bonds through time um yugi's grandpa is one of the priests in the old realm um and so kind of throw every zork, character back in there zork, somewhere. yeah yeah well zork necrophades shows up and he's like i'm gonna destroy everything fuck you and yugi's grandpa is there and he was like i have to call upon an old friend to defend us from this ancient evil you once helped us before help us again exodia the forbidden one and he like brings up all the five tablets because exodia is so strong he has to be bound in five different stone mm -hmm. tablets mm -hmm. and so yugi's ancient grandpa who isn't his grandpa in the old world he's just a priest summons exodia who is an actual giant monster a similar size to zork necrophades and then he's like, Exodia, I release you from your bindings. Now fight for us. So the implication is that 
Exodia saved their nation from like mm-hmm. an invading force with his mighty power. And then to repay him, they trapped him in a bunch of stone tablets and then also bound him in chains in the stone tablets. So he had to be like double freed by Yugi's ancient grandpa. And him and Zork Necrophades like duke it out for a while. And he's like, Exodia, obliterate! But Zork Necrophades is too strong. He's able to defeat Exodia, the Forbidden One. Uh, and so all, so all hope seems lost. But then the ancient Egyptian gods, who uh, are also monsters and are of bound course. in tablets. Of course. Um, there, there's the whole arc where like they each of the like people who had a relationship to ancient Egypt uh, also have like a Egyptian God that Egyptian God card associated with them. So there's Slifer, the sky dragon and there's the wing guardian of Ra, and there's obelisk, the tormentor. Okay. Um, And so Yugi and Kaiba and one of the other priests who is like kind of in charge of the other, the other, the third, god all summon the three egyptian gods who then fuse together to create the like god of light who's the only person that can beat the god of shadow okay. and then Fair. they destroy zork necrophate their zork necrophates uh using the combined version of the of the the god cards that is the end of zork necrophates except it's not of because not. he then inhabits the bandit king who exists at this time period and who is waging war against the Pharaoh and the fused version of the ancient bandit King and of Zork Necrophades becomes the malevolent spirit that inhabits the millennium ring that eventually becomes Yami Bakura who takes over Yami Bakura. And so Yugi has to defeat darkness in the, current time because it's the reincarnated soul binding of zork necrophades who is the ancient evil who tried to destroy all things but instead of fighting with summoned monsters in the current age he has to play a children's card game all right oh boy and that's and that's that's why that's (laughs) that's why the that's why they exist at one point they all get teleported into a virtual reality realm where dual monsters are just real in virtual reality but um that's a whole different arc and that that's that's why that's why dual monsters exists outside of the card game because uh it does exist it's based on an ancient egyptian uh, an ancient egyptian game that is uh that the pharaohs would play and fight each other and uh, fight ancient evils with. And Exodia was a really strong one. And Yugi was there. And his friend is Dark Magician. And uh, Kariba was there too. And he's a little cutie. And that's how you play <laughs> And that's how you play Yu-Gi-Oh card, card games. games. That's yeah. how you play the Yu-Gi-Oh card games. <laughs> and so that's, if that's... you want... The, the, tip, the tip for today is if you want to be good at a game have an ancient spirit inside of you that played the original version of the game which involved shadow creatures uh and killing each other and have powerful artifacts and that's that's it that's all there's no other lore to Yu-Gi-Oh. that's all of it there's there's no and other lore. don't and don't <laughs> tweet at us about how there is more at no point do people start getting on motorcycles and driving around <laughs> playing That's... a card game like, with monsters against each other. I I was just thinking about, uh, and we're not getting into the second series, but at the beginning of this, Fred, Fran was talking about like, oh, there must be like just a school where they learn all of this stuff about the oh, cards. Yeah. And that is, the second series yeah. is entirely about a school where they yeah, all they hang don't... out and play is the card the game. Is that the Yu-Gi-Oh! They GX don't... series? It, yeah, yes. they, oh, don't, okay. they don't have, they don't have, uh, they don't have regular school anymore. They just have dual they, school at that point. They just have dual school, dual school. And dual they, school. And we're yeah. wrapping this up though. This was a productive... This was a productive first episode. Uh, are there any final thoughts from you guys about these these ancient monsters? I like the the winged guardian of the fortress because the title of his card wouldn't fit on the card, so they had to make a smaller font 
of text yes. specifically for that one card. Wayne huh. Karibo looks like a mini cousin it with giant uh, eyes with wings aw, and like a little monster. Does, well, monster. yeah, monster. so Karibo the base yeah, the base Karibo is just uh is just the little brown fluff ball mm-hmm. with the little hands. The little and then, like they made they made winged Karibo. They just put wings on him. All right. Uh, well, we we have to sign off here before we, we have get to pulled be into the shadow <laughs> realm ourselves. All right. Uh thank you again you two for joining me letting me talk about about ancient egyptian kings uh i i will see you guys as always uh when we're not recording we never see or talk to each other so I'll hopefully see you guys in two weeks we'll talk about we'll talk about the deep lore of a different topic to be determined uh but until then thank you everyone for for listening to our new little podcast hopefully we'll be generating some new funnies some new some new deep lores coming up soon but until then uh, again, I was CJ. I was Fran. This was Walter Cronkite signing <laughs> off. No, That's... I'm Ethan. And we'll uh... talk to you guys. We'll, uh, what should we, should we come up with a sign off? We didn't talk about a sign off. We should come start. up with a sign off, but we didn't do that. So well, That's the to, lore like... you know. Roll credit. And there's nothing else but that. And 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 thank you for watching. And it's time to duel.